Well, hello there, and you join us here today to talk about the most Swiss of Swiss watches. That's right, this is 10 Swiss watches for a thousand bucks. Now that does sound like I'm gonna get you 10 Swiss watches, Tom, for a thousand bucks, but here's how it's gonna go down. I'm gonna pick five watches. They're gonna be a thousand bucks each. You're gonna pick five watches. They're all going to be Swiss. Dear viewer and listener, here's where you come in. Tell us at the end, did Tom pick the best five or did I pick the best five? Are you ready to go, Tom? All right then. I've gone for my first pick, the Ball Fireman Enterprise watch. Now, the fireman doesn't refer to those sexy men in the big red truck that tackle blazes. This fireman refers to the man whose job it was to shovel coal into the boiler of a steam locomotive. Because Ball Watch Company uh, are all about the railways. Uh, because they started in America in 1894. Now, it might sound like I've completely fluffed the first Swiss watch choice, <laughs> but hang on a second. Um, so the Ball Watch Company was uh, started in America. It was an unprecedented endeavour that included the creation, preparation and inspection of thousands of watches. And that was in 1891. Um, and then in the 70s, they began using Swiss movements because that's where it's at, isn't it? And so it remains. Yeah, so they've got they've got a, a number of in-house calibers that are all COSC certified and Swiss official chronometer tested, all that good stuff. This watch features the automatic caliber Ball RR1103. I'm not sure if that's in-house or if that's some sort of modified editor or whatnot. But the coolest thing about it, and, and one of the things Ball is probably most famous for, is their glow-in-the-dark action. And this watch has got 15 micro gas tubes that make up the hour indices, and uh, there's one each on the hour, minute, and second hand. And there's sort of little glow-in-the-dark capsules which are really, really cool. And yeah, it's just a really nice steel watch. Shame, shame to start off with an American watch, Tom, but I'd... I'd... It says Swiss made on the dial. It says it right there. It's kind of a shame, actually, because the American brands were incredibly good. And due to popular demand, they, they moved over to Switzerland instead of staying where they were based. Maybe one day we'll see them go back. But for now, Swiss made, you are correct by a technicality, which I think is the best kind of correct. Tom, I will take your balls and raise you one Baume Mercier. Now this is a proper Swiss watch, made in Switzerland. Made in Switzerland since 1830, and that's a while ago. That's old. This is the Classima 10324. Not quite sure why it's called the 10324. I don't think it's the 10,324th design that Baume Mercier has made, but it is at least described as a fine men's watch. Uh, Which is a shame, because I'm sure women can wear it too. Yeah. Naughty Boma Mercier stuck in the past there. But that's what you get for being <laughs> a million years old or however old they are. Yeah. You get a 40 millimeter stainless steel case, and it is apparently powered by Swiss made energy, which is their way of saying quartz. Uh, so what, what do you lose in fancy, fancy mechanical? You gain in sweet, sweet thinness. This is a th six millimeters thick, a very, very thin watch. So it really has wow. those dress watch vibes. Very small lugs as well. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to wear very, very nicely for both men and women, which is why it's odd that they've yeah. very distinctly picked out men uh, for this watch. Lovely blue sunburst dial as well. Some Roman numerals and a date for knowing the date. Always good. Very nice, yeah. So, uh, for my next pick, I've gone with the Frédéric Constant Classics Index Automatic. Now, started in the 80s, so... 1880s? No, the good old 1980s. Oh, okay. Shell suits and shoulder pads. Frédéric Constant was there. Yeah. Yeah, so relatively young for a Swiss watch company, but um, definitely Swiss. It says Geneva right there under their logo. Um, so, I'm having that. So this is the Classics Index Automatic. It's classics by name and classics by appearance. It's a very traditional looking timepiece, especially this model with the silver dial and the brown calf leather strap, which is very nice, very elegant looking. It's 40 millimeters in diameter and it's also very thin. This is only 10 millimeters thick as well. So uh, like you say, should wear very nicely for men and women, should slide under any cuff or up inside a vending machine, if that's how you operate. <laughs> Some nice details to be had here. So you've got the indices there, which have a sort of beveled tip to them, which gives them a little bit of visual interest. And the second hand is blue. 
and you get a pure matte dials. Inside is an automatic FC303, which I think is a base Solita movement. So altogether, it becomes something that's very refined and tasteful, but also like quite casual as well. It could be a, just a quite quite a nice daily wear. I admire the optimism of a brand 150 years after the founding of its contemporaries, thinking, yeah, we can do this too. We can make Swiss watches. It's the 1980s and everyone's like, whoa, like digital clocks and, and that. And they're going, yeah, let's make a mechanical watch instead. Sure. Tom, let me take you into the world of Certina because this is the DS Powermatic 80. Now, Satina were founded in 1880, so 100 years before your one. Okay, yep. I'll have you know. That's fine. That's a century. Details. This watch may look quite dainty and small, but you'll find it's actually 41 millimetres across, 11 millimetres thick, and you can have it in a variety of different steels, including a PVD gold version. What you'll note is the, the designation of Powermatic 80, and that might ring some bells because this is the Etta caliber used by Tissot in the PRX, mm. but it's also used here in Satina, which is also a, a Swatch Group brand. And that means you get that lovely 80 hours of power reserve, a, I wouldn't necessarily call it an in-house movement, but it is a fairly unique movement, um, giving you a fully Swiss and very uh, elegant and classic looking timepiece. If you like that sort of thing, certainly looking at the photos, this is exactly the kind of watch you would buy if you were, say, a graphic designer or perhaps someone with obsessive compulsive disorder. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very interesting, isn't it? It's quite different. I like the gold PVD version, and especially on that banded NATO strap there, it's a bit different. I think it's quite fun, actually. So for my next Swiss watch brand, I've gone with another American brand. This is Hamilton, <laughs> again, with their pioneering railroad, aviation and military spirit. Um, but as Hamilton say, American spirit, Swiss precision. So established in 1892 in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, but they hitched their wagon to the Swiss donkey named Etto in 2011. So uh, that's... <laughs> That's all the Swiss heritage you're getting. But since then, they've been appearing in every Chris Nolan movie. So that's just as cool as any amount of Swiss history um, in my eyes. So this is the Khaki Navy Scuba Auto. And it has a chunky steel case and a chunky bezel. And there are various colorways. I like this blue and white version. Um, it's got a very nice sort of nautical freshness going on, which is, which is very pleasing to me. Um, and especially this Sirocco edition. Um, I'm not entirely sure who Cy Syroco is, uh, some kind of engineering company. Um, but what they're bringing to this watch, I think, is the orange minute track, the nice flashes of orange there on the minute track in the second hand, which really pops against the navy blue dial. And the, uh, the white rings in the centre is new to this edition. Again, I think that's some kind of nod to the wind-powered speed record attempts that Sirocco are embarking upon. Anyway, um, the blue rubber strap as well is a really nice addition. Yeah, really cool watch. Hamilton do do really cool watches in general, and, and this is another one. I believe that's another appearance for the Powermatic 80 in there, but that is a very nice looking watch, isn't it? Um, talking of nautical fresh, that's exactly what I asked for when I get my hair cut. And he knows what you mean when you say that, right? But I get this. I don't, I don't know what you think, but... Like it's been blown about by the wind and faintly smelling of sewage. <laughs> okay. Good. Tom, if you like orange, then you're going to love this Doxa Sub 200 Pro. Now, it's called professional, but I'm saying pro because it makes me sound like I know what I'm doing. Uh. Doxa was founded in 1889, and they were right in there, in the thick of it, with Rolex, with Omega, and all of those guys making the first dive watches that people were using under the sea. Now, famed hat wearer and undersea explorer Jacques Cousteau was known for wearing a number of different dive watches because he took whichever one was offered to him for free. And one of those was this Doxa. So it is a proper tried and true and tested. Um, the Doxa big chunker dive watches, they will cost you more, but this is a smaller 200 meter water resistance, but still every bit the dive watch that you could possibly want. It's 42 millimetres across and 14 millimetres thick. You get the 200 metres of water resistance, a Swiss Salita calibre, and with that bright orange dial, you won't lose your wrist when you go diving. Pretty cool. Yeah, that is nice. I love a bit of international orange, me. And it's not just international orange. I like the bright yellow and turquoise and... Yeah, fun, fun, fun. Yes, they have definitely gone for colours that people find popular at the moment. Good on them, I say. 
Right, for my next one, I've got a Swiss juggernaut uh, since 1975. <clears throat> Again, it's quite new, but, you know, those Swiss Jura mountains aren't going anywhere, so set up a watchmaking company there <laughs> and crank them out. And that's what Maurice Lacroix have done. And this is the, I think they want me to say icon, but... Acorn? It's Acorn Quartz. I'm going to say Icon. I'm just going to say it. I'm going to abide. This is the Icon Quartz 40mm. So it has a fixed bezel with six arms, as Maurice Lacroix refers to them. But I struggle to identify those as arms. What would you call them? Nodules. Yeah, cool. I was going to say John B's, but we'll go with nodules. Um, so you've got the fixed <laughs> bezel there with the uh, the the nodules on them. Um, and this uh, Icon Quartz has been reappraised lately based on some customer feedback. This is a new iteration. It's very familiar. Well, one of the things they've changed, it's a subtle change, but I think it's quite nice and it's working in its favour. Uh, the Some of the sharpness and the angles of the edges and corners have been reduced, so you've got a nice greater overall softness to the piece, which I think makes it feel a bit more refined and actually, you know, a little bit more sporty. Um, you've got a nice sunburst blue dial and thin applied indices, which give it a little something, something. And it just looks like a cool watch. It's 40 millimeters. There's a date window at three. It's got 100 meters of water resistance. What's not to like? Icon. Maurice Lacroix are very much known for making good quality watches for the money. So if you're looking for something familiar and you want it to be well made, then you, you can put your money here and you'll know that you're going to get a good quality watch. It's not particularly original. It's not ages and ages of Swiss heritage, but it is going to keep your wrist pretty happy in a, a 1970s vibe for, for a while, for a good while, I think. Up until the point that you've saved your £30,000 for a Royal Oak. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tom, the next Swiss watch I'm going to give for you is a, a Tissot. Founded in 1853. And I know what you think I'm going to say. I know you think I'm going to say PRX, but I'm not, Tom. Yeah. I'm going to say another word. Gentleman. What? This is the very bizarrely named Tiso Gentleman Powermatic 80 Silesium. Silesium? Ooh. Chucks a, chucks a little bit of marvelness at the end there. You know, sounds like where Vikings go when they die. Or... Is Tiso sitting on their own silicon hairspring that we don't know about, eh? Oh, damn! <laughs> well, this is the third outing for the Powermatic 80. Uh, I think I've kept count correctly there. This one has a silicon balance spring, as you mentioned. It does! It does. Wow! You know a thing. That was a good guess. And that means that it is very resistant to magnetic fields, which means you won't get that oh no, my watch is running fast, now I have to go to the jewels and have it demagnetized that you can get with metal balance springs. It's also a very sure. attractive watch. Um, 40 millimeters across, 12 millimeters thick, pretty much spot on there in terms of proportions, lovely sunburst dial in a variety of different colors and shades. Steel case, 100 meters of water resistance, a, a date window there with a nice little frame around it. Altogether, you're getting, basically, if you were to describe the watch that you want at the price that you want it for, this is kind of it, you know? Absolutely, yeah. It, this is the kind of watch I like. Steel, blue, nice sapphire case window on the back, so you can see you can see the nice silesium. Tom, if we don't retrieve the silesium by the end of the day, the world will explode. For silesium! Lightning strikes my eyes. Uh, right, shut up, though, because... From one Greek god to another, this is the Zodiac Olympos STP-111. So, Arist Kalame. Are you all right? Son of a watchmaker, 1882. There's a black and white photo of an old dude on the About Us page. So, <laughs> Kalame's dynasty managed to become one of the fastest growing companies in Switzerland. And in 1908, he patented the name Zodiac. So, that's plenty old, isn't it? So points for me there. So um, this is the Olympos and it's a legacy piece from 1961 inspired by the Olympos military watches made for the British Royal Navy. So it's a rugged field watch built for outdoor adventure as is most of Zodiac's watches I think that's where they're at. Um, probably the most notable thing about this is the case shape. It's giving me Batman vibes Tom. Batman? <laughs> the Batman? Oh right like oh ba do you mean Batman's cowl? Yeah. 
Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, some sort of grapple gun. Well, it's got the nickname the Manta Ray because I think most people think it looks like a manta ray, not anything associated with Batman. Batman's cooler. Uh, I think it's because of the, the sort of pointed lugs at the top. There's a bit of asymmetry, and the pointed lugs look like the sort of the fins that you would find on uh, around the mouth of a manta ray. Uh, yeah, that's Batman. So, yeah, well, yeah, nice n- nice Batman helmet case shape there. Um, uh, other notable features include a hacking seconds function, um, which stops the second hand dead in its tracks for precise time setting. And there's a lovely smoky textured dial um, in either green or black. I like the green one. It looks like someone's shining a spotlight on a lawn at night, um, which is very good. It's sort of transportative in that sense. Who's there? If you, yeah, like a UFO abducting some numerals that are neatly arranged on the lawn. Um, what are we talking about? Yeah, and, and the numerals themselves are actually quite nice, sort of vintagey, sandy, creamy tones there, which some people like, myself included. Um, yeah, so very nice vintage vibes overall. I think it's a really cool looking watch. It's nice to look at something unfamiliar for a change. Yes. They make a lot of round watches, don't they? they? Do. This isn't round. And I'm, I'm all for that. But Tom, let's round out these 10 Swiss watches with an old favourite from Longines. Uh, now, Longine, founded in 1832. It's not the oldest here, but it's very close by two years. This is the Hydro Conquest, which means sea battle something war. Sea invader. And this is a 41mm watch, 12mm thick, 300 meters of water resistance, which is exactly what you want from your dive watch. You want way too much water resistance just so you know you're going to be safe when you wash your hands. It's got the Swiss Quartz L157, sourced from Etta. And I think this watch is probably the best quality here. When you look at a Longines close-up, the details, they are chef's kiss. Yes. The markers, they've got those metal frames around the hands. They've got the nice little kink and the almost snowflake-like loom plot there on the hour hand. Crown guards, all shaped and lovely and chunky. Everything about this, the knurls on the bezel, the shape of the lugs, the polished links, all of it is is way, way up there for the cost. This, this to me, is one of the most complete packages that you can get. Yes, it is quartz, but where you lose out there, you really gain in the quality of the thing. And Longines, 1832, one of the oldest brands ever in the whole world. Yeah, I really like it. And um, sometimes I can't decide whether or not I want my markers as dots or indices, bars or big numerals. Um, (laughs) So this Hydro Conquest has got me covered, um, which is really cool. That'll do you good on any dive if if that's what you like to use your dive watch for. I mean, it's a bit weird, but you might do. (laughs) Well, there you go, dear viewer and listener. Ten Swiss watches for around a thousand bucks. Would you pick any of those? Would you add something else to the list? And who do you think did it better? Me or Tom? Shaking my head there. Please let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, Please also like and subscribe as it really does help us. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye-bye.